everyone, today I thought I would walk you through my most used powders for my face, obviously. I'm like, I don't know, baby powder, foot powder, and the different types, the different kinds of powders, and why I have them. And I just laugh because looking back, when I first started this channel, I think I had one powder for my face. In fact, it was this, which is still, I rarely reach for this, but it's the Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder, this guy. And this was it. And then as I learned more about the YouTube beauty community and watched everybody else's videos, I'm looking at all this in front of me and this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. It's just a hoarder's paradise. But anyway, I do feel like there, if you're a beauty junkie, that's probably one reason why you're watching, but also there are specific needs for specific powders and you can have a powder wardrobe. So I'm gonna walk you through it. And instead of getting into all the technical reasons why you want one thing to do what I'm just going to walk you through why an everyday user like myself, I consider myself like an every woman's guide. I'm just an average makeup user who maybe is exposed to a little bit more makeup than the average person, but from the average consumer's point of view, this is why I use what I use. So I'm going to start out with the most specialized thing and then go from there. So one reason that I use powder is to set my makeup. And when I mean set, I mean so that the liquid or creamy stuff that I have put on already, like foundation or concealer, doesn't move around and get patchy or slide off my face for whatever reason. Now I do have dry skin, but even dry skin perspires, gets a little glowy. I do get some oil, not very much, but there is oil throughout the day production. So a um, powder will help make everything just stay in place. So the very specific powder I now use, this is a current May 2019 favorite, um, only in two spots, to set concealer under my eyes and to um, basically set in my more wrinkly areas. So right around here, the marionette lines and down in this area is the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Poreless Finish Airbrush Powder in the shade Translucent. It does come in a pressed form, which I also have, but I do prefer the loose powder here. It is colorless. It doesn't have flashback, although I am probably the worst person to tell you if something gives you flashback. And by flashback, that means if someone were to take a uh, photo of me using flash, you would see like a white cast. Well, I'm already very fair, so you can't get much more fair than this. So flashback's hard to determine on someone of my skin tone. So generally speaking, I have not seen flashback with it, but I just, after I've put on my foundation and then my under eye concealer, I use a setting brush and I just pat, very lightly pat slash brush the, the, that particular powder here, here, and here. So that is a very specific powder for a very specific purpose. Strangely enough, it does prevent creasing and prevents my concealer from looking caking. You would think powder would have the opposite effect, but I assure you it does not. Okay, so since we're speaking about setting, the main reason that I use powder, and I think that most people reach for powder, is in fact to set your liquid cream-based makeup, to make everything stay put, and in my case, to make sure that it is an even canvas for the next layer of makeup that you put on. So. If I have foundation on, I always have foundation on, and then I go to my next step, which in my case, I do foundation, concealer, powder, and then I do my bronzer. But if I skip the powder part, when I put on bronzer, it will go on patchy. It will cling to the drier parts of my face and maybe go on more evenly over other areas, and it just won't be a nice, even canvas. So the powder gives my face an even, non-clingy, smooth surface in which to apply the next layer of powder. And for that, I, I do reach for a few options depending on a few things. Generally speaking, when I do this step, I want a powder that doesn't add coverage, sometimes I do, doesn't add any luminosity or matte, mattify. I just want an even blank canvas and moving forward. So for that, today I actually use the Hourglass Veil, let me get this name right, it's long. Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. There is the tiniest bit of sheen to this, but I mean, I have highlighter here, but that's it. Real, and I have a ring light on. Um, I see glow, I'm looking at the monitor. I see glow here, but really nothing else is pinging off my face. So this is a loose powder, you've seen it. I have some sitting here. Um, very little is necessary. It just gives a nice uh, translucent colorless 
finished to the face and I can move on to the next step. Another one that I like very, very much, and I don't know if I've ever bought the full size version of it because I'm always buying sets that come with a pretty good size, is the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent as well. This does come in colors, but I prefer Translucent. It's colorless, it goes with pretty much every skin type. Doesn't add or take away to your complexion. It just, like I said, blank canvas. A drugstore option that I like very much is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. I have it in the shade 5 Fair Light. And then probably my absolute current favorite and has been a favorite for a very long time is the Charlotte Tilbury. Again, I don't know what it is with these makeup companies. They love giving them really long names. Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade 1 Fair. And what I like most about this one is it is the most finely milled powder you could possibly find on the market, which means it never gets cakey, it never collects in my wrinkles and in my lines. It just gives this beautiful, well, flawless finish as it is aptly named, and then you can move on to the next step. The only con with this one, this is not a great powder to throw in your purse because one, it doesn't come with a little powder puff and there's no room in the compact to do so. That's not a big deal, but that's one reason. The more important reason is because it is so finely milled, it is on the delicate side, and if it gets jostled too much, it will break. So this stays home. Now there are some days where I'm not having a great skin day, or I'm filming and I want a little bit more coverage, or I'm going to a special event and I know I'm getting photographed. So again, I want a little bit more coverage. I want it. I want to feel a little more made up. Uh, maybe I'm. I just want to boost the foundation or what have you. So there are some powders that I use in this step before I, you know, after the liquids, before I move on to the powder step of my makeup, you know, bronzer, highlighter, blush, etc. So these powders will set my makeup, but they will also add coverage slash pigmentation. So let's go back to the original here. This is the Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder, and I have it in the shade Naturally Neutral. So it's not quite translucent. There is pigmentation to it. They also have one in translucent, but in translucent, translucent extra coverage, which will also do the trick. Um, these do come in different skin tones, depending on your skin tone, and this will add coverage, especially if you use this to bake. I'm past baking. I can't, I'm, myself, my, my expiration date has happened for baking, so no baking for me. But if you do wanna bake, this one in particular is great for that. Um, one that I started using a long time ago, and this is one I keep in my purse a lot, is from It Cosmetics. It's the Your Skin But Better CC Plus Airbrush Perfecting Powder with SPF 50. Um, I have it currently in the shade Fair. As the summer progresses, I may bump all the way up to light. Looks like that, and I think you can see, as compared to, say, the translucent one here, maybe, maybe not. No, they both just look like powder, okay. I assure you, this one actually has coverage. Look at that. I mean, this looks like an eyeshadow. So, I mean, I can swatch it. Most powders, you cannot swatch. Um, so I can apply this with a fluffy brush, and depending on how hard I wanna hit it, I can get pretty good coverage with it. You know, if you're having a great skin day and you just wanna slap on some moisturizer and apply with a denser brush, you can almost use this like foundation. Um, one of the other reasons that I keep this particular one in my purse, other than it has room for a little puff there, is if I notice a little blemish popping up during the day, I can stick my finger in here, like I just did, get a little bit on my finger, and then let's pretend I have a blemish that is currently showing on my chin. It's not, but, and I can just tap it on there in a quick pinch and blend and cover it up. So, this is a great one to keep in your bag, on the fly, so to speak. A fairly recent favorite that is actually a powder foundation, but I do use to set my makeup, especially on filming days and on special occasions, is also from It Cosmetics, and it's the Celebration Foundation Illumination version, and again, I have it in the shade Fair. This one, like I said, this one is brand new because I dropped my other one. And while it's pretty sturdy, it is not gonna withstand a four foot drop onto tile. Um, it shattered, it was so sad. Anyway, this one is, is a powder foundation. So definitely a ton of coverage. If you put this on top of foundation, you will look flawless. Um, I don't recommend that like just for every day. That's very heavy coverage. This is also great for those of you who don't wanna wear foundation. If you just wanna moisturize and just, you know, 
take a brush and fluff it all over, it'll give you decent coverage without, you know, a full on foundation effect. Because I have dry skin and I tend to look sort of, I don't wanna say dead or lifeless or tired, but all of those adjectives apply. I like the illumination version better. If you run to more oily or glowy, you might like the original formula better. That's just personal preference. But um, I also like to use this at the very end of my makeup, and we're gonna transition into talking about those powders in a minute. After I've applied all my makeup for the day, maybe I was a little too heavy handed with the blush or bronzer, I can take the fluffy brush and just lightly go over those areas, even things out a little bit, use my setting spray, and we're done. I do wanna talk about a drugstore option, not quite as heavy duty as what I just showed you, but definitely a lower price point from Milani. I've started throwing this in my bag as well. It is um, Conceal and Perfect Shine Proof Powder. This is definitely more of a matte formula. I have it in the shade Fair Pale, shade one, go figure. This has a lot of coverage. Um, it feels almost creamy to the touch. Very pigmented as well. Not as illuminating as the ID Cosmetics and not as pigmented, you can see it's up there but a pretty pretty close in drugstore price. So um, I kind of reach for them. If it's a little more uh, oily day, glowy day, maybe it's a little more humid outside, I don't want that glow, I will reach for the Milani over the Cosmetics. And then this last set of powders, I reach for these at the end. When I've already finished all my makeup, everything's on before I finish with a setting spray, this is to add a little more life back into my face. Maybe I've used a foundation that's more on the matte side, like my Estee Lauder Double Wear, or um, Too Faced Born This Way might not be as glowy, or you know something to that effect. Or maybe it's in the winter time, my skin's a little more dull. I just feel like I need a little bit more life, a little bit, bit more glow. I tend to not reach for these in the summer because thanks to Mother Nature, that glow is generously provided. But these are, um, just a little extra to just add a little bit of life back into your face. They're both by Hourglass. Originally, I used this. It is, and I still sometimes do, it's the Ambient Lighting Palette. It has three shades, Dim Light, Incandescent Light, and Radiant Light. And let me show you. So what I started to just do is take one brush and just go back and forth across and blend the three together and just kind of go all over my face, sometimes only using the middle one to set under my eyes. I found that to be a bit too glowy even for me. Sometimes just using one side or the other, depending on how light or less light my skin tone was looking that day. And this is great, but I found this one to be a little bit better, and this was not my idea. Um, Lisa J Makeup actually showed me this last year and I ran out and bought it. This is also from Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. It's in Luminous Light. This is a little yellow, as you can see. So it adds not just a little bit of glow without shininess. It's not a highlighter, um, but it also adds a little warmth to my face, which I can always, I'm very pale, and it doesn't make me more bronzed. It's just almost like a candlelight glow to your face, which is why these ambient powders are so amazing. So, like I said, I don't tend to use these in the summer because I'm already glowy enough, but maybe in the evenings when you're going out at night and definitely in the winter drier months, um, this is good to have at hand. I did wanna share with you the brushes that I tend to reach for. I didn't bring this one with me, so I just wanna mention really briefly, you've seen it in pretty much every Get Ready With Me video I've ever done. Um, to set under my eyes, to use one of the setting powders, I always use, not always, but 90% of the time, I use the Real Technique setting brush. Very budget friendly, you can find it everywhere from Walmart to your grocery store, to Ulta, I'll list it below if you don't know what I'm talking about. But then to use any of these powders, the one I keep um, on my makeup area is from It Cosmetics. Does it have a name? Yes, it does. It's the Heavenly Lux Wand Ball Powder Brush. Pretty much self-explanatory, very fluffy, very easy and soft to just fluff all over. And then because some of the powders I like to reach for that I keep in my purse, don't have a puff, and sometimes a puff is too dense and it packs on too much powder, so I like to use, I prefer to use a brush. Um, I keep this one in my purse, I don't know why, and this one is from Sigma, and it's the large powder F30, but it's like the little travel size handle, so I keep it in my little makeup bag inside my purse, and again, easily just fluff all over. So those are my favorite powders and the reasons why I use them, whether it's to set my foundation, give my next level of, next layer, I should say, of makeup 
an even base to layer on top of, maybe it's to add some coverage or to alter how the foundation looks underneath, add a little glow, sometimes mattify, in my case, rarely mattify, cover up a blemish, warm up the face without using bronzer. That is my little powder wardrobe collection. I'd love to hear from you. What are your current favorite powders? Are you as insane as I am? Do you have these many options? Do you have more? Do you have less? Do I have a problem? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Make sure you're subscribed so we can do this again next time and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.